Okay, today we are going to use the We Are Emery Keepers envelope punch board to make some envelopes. And I have used this one a lot, so I feel pretty comfortable jumping right in. So two things I always use with this are a cutting board and the envelope punch board. There are two types of paper I want to use. I'm going to use this one that's kind of a super light, one-sided, my mind's eye 2009. I went to my paper stash, and I have some papers in my stash, and this is a little bit heavier. doesn't say what brand this is, but we're going to use this one, and then I'm also going to be doing a mixed media journal. So this is the journal book that we're going to be filling up with different We Are Memory Keepers things. So this envelope, after we get done cutting it out, you can leave if you want, but I'm also gonna um, tarp one of them up with mixed media. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna use mixed media paper to make a eh, normal size envelope. So I really like a tall, skinny envelope, and I think these are called slim lines. Right, so the, the kind of tallest, skinniest I can get, because we're, we're looking at, this is where it's so fun, make an envelope this way, is you can get an envelope in exactly the size you want. So I just don't want it higher than nine and a half. So let's look at our paper size. My biggest paper size is nine. So I can make a three and a half by seven and a half envelope. We're gonna make a nine by nine paper. That's fine. Okay, that's fair. So we should just, on this one, on this side, be cutting off exactly along that little pull-out line. And then this pull-out line. Now, you're going to be jelly because this is a Martha Stewart paper trimmer. And I don't think she makes them anymore, and they don't make replacement blades. I'm going to keep this, set this aside, and keep this for later because that's good mixed media paper. And now we're done with this. All right, this is gonna be an easy peasy lemon squeezy one. Nine by nine, so all you wanna do is you wanna look at the paper size, nine by nine, and then the score line is three and one eighths. And it, don't worry, you don't have to do force or anything like that, it says right there, three and one eighths. So we're gonna punch it, and then we're gonna make a score line, see this? score line so we need to score right along that line and you just need to find out you can start up here if it's a little bit weird there you go and it'll go right into that track and let you score over okay so now we want we do want to let's fold this over so we know that score line is correct because our next thing, you line up your score line with this, you make your thing, and then you just come in here. Now we're making a really tall, skinny envelope. It would be, I think, for what they call slimline cards. You're gonna punch, and then you gotta score again. So you gotta find that channel in here. And I do believe this thing comes with a bone folder. I just don't, a bone folder meaning the little scritchy tool. Oh, here's one. So I just grabbed a spatula, but you could use a bone folder. I have glue on my thing. And then you're just gonna punch. And score. As a mixed media artist, even my bone folder is nasty. Okay, you're done with this now. So this is a tall, skinny card. And what you're gonna wanna do is this. So you need to decide, is this gonna be like this, like tall this way, or is it gonna open this way? And for me, it's gonna open this way because I'm gonna make a tall tag that comes out and pulls out. So I just need to Cut this off. And then cut 
this off. Ooh, do we want it to look cute? Do we want to do something cute with that cut? We could totally get a die out and cut that something cute using the, um, the big shot. But for today, let's just cut this over. I'm actually going to cut this flush. There we go. Boop, boop, boop. And then this flips up, right? So now we have a fully functional envelope. I'm going to use it as a fully functional place to put so you wouldn't glue this side you would glue that side you wouldn't glue this side if you want the flap to work in which case you just rub the glue off right but I do want to get this stuck down real well and this is on paper so we can glue this whole shebang now you could have decorated this like you could have done all the stuff that I'm going to do today on it and I'm going to put um, time stamps in here so you can go I'm going to do another really big envelope that I'm going to tip into my journal. If you want to skip over decorating this one you can skip over decorating it. But now we're just going to seal this up. And you can use, um, I would only use, I tried uh, to use YooHoo. I didn't love the glue stick. I use Nuvo glue. You could use um, double-sided tape. Do I, oh, I have some right here. So you could use, this is scrapbook.com double-sided tape. And the nice thing about this kind is, you can just tear it with your fingers so you don't have to um, you don't have to get your scissors out. So if you're going to keep anything in here that is um, little, so if you're going to put in um, sequins or anything like that, then you have to seal it up good. But for what we're doing, what I'm doing for my journal, I don't need it to be super sealed up. I can just slide this over. Now, this is a fully sealed up envelope, right? This is not, this is not um, usable at the moment. But what I'm going to wind up doing eventually, once I decide which side's up, which side's down, is to cut either the top or the bottom with scissors. So that's how you make a envelope using the We Are Memory Keepers punch board. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to decorate this. So I want to get some collage paper. Okay, and I don't want a straight line, so let's get this a little funny. There we go. And we're gonna get our silicone brush because I'm going to be using Mod Podge and I ruined lots of my good brushes. So just doing this, I can keep from ruining my brushes. And we do want to get it all the way to the edge of this envelope, right? To get that collage paper stuck on. And this is Tim Holtz typeset. Nope collage paper. What's it called? Typeset. Yep. And we're just going to glue that on there. Very cute. And we are going to put some Mod Podge over it. And then it's called decoupage because you've covered the top and the bottom. 
And Mod Podge is really good for sticking down collage paper. So let's put a piece on the back. All right, let's put two pieces on the back because we want to kind of spread the love. This is going to go all the way across, it looks like. Okay, we're going to pick this up. We're going to Mod Podge that, and then we're going to go over the whole thing with a quick layer to seal it. I'm going to come back in with color, but the next thing... Oh, I glued it. Glued it down. It's fine. We're going to put this up here. Oops. A little bit of a drunk sailor there. There we go. The next thing we're going to do is get a little bit of um, napkins to add some color to this. So I'll be right back. I'm going to go grab the napkins, let this dry for a wee second, and I will be right back. Okay, we're going to put some uh, other kind of tissue paper. Now I order from... That nice lady at Joggles, because she sends me emails all the time telling me things I should order. And she sends all the stuff out in amazing tissue paper. So sometimes I've gotten, um, like, cityscape tissue paper. But today we're going to use this, which is fun because it already has a kind of a texture to it. And where it's white our stuff will show through. We're gonna put it right on there. There we go, I got the glue on, and we're gonna stick this down. You could use napkins, you could use anything for this collage part of this. I just wanna get it figured out which end is up. So let's get one more little piece over here. Ooh, maybe we do this whole bottom area. A little much, isn't it? Ooh, that's perfect. All right, I think I know. I think this is going to be the bottom, and that is going to be the top. And I am using uh, Canton Mixed Media 60 pound paper and you want to use a decent weight of paper for the ones that you're going to be doing a lot of this uh, mixed media on because if you don't your envelope is going to be too lightweight to take all of the things you throw at it right okay so now two things two interesting things real quick and then we'll move on is we want to go back and we want to see our nine by nine tag our card size is three and a half by seven and a half so you could um make a card the exact right size but we're going to use that cutoff piece right that we had from making this i'm going to cut the top of this open so now it's just a open tag thing and we're going to put this in here, and later on, we're going to, you know, make this a tag, make this something exciting. But that is how you can make a tag envelope. Next thing we're going to do is make a big, giant envelope to tip into our art journal. So we're doing 9 by 7. And I'm going to do the plain paper one for this. So we can't get up to 9 by 7, but we can get up to 6 by 8 and a half. And the paper size has to be 11 by, 11 by 11 and a half. And all you're going to do is you're going to see your card size, which means the size of card you're going to put in it, and then your paper size, and then it's going to tell you the score line. So my score line is 
four and seven eighths, but the first thing I have to do is cut my paper to 11 and a half by 11 and a half. And luckily we have this piece of scrapbook paper. So if you're gonna make big envelopes, scrapbook paper generally comes in 12 by 12 sheets. So functionally, what we're gonna have to do is cut off a half an inch, right? So this is gonna be 12, 12 inches by 12 inches. So all I have to do is come here on any one of your paper trimmers and cut a half an inch off. I don't gotta measure the 11 and a half, right? We know how long, how big a piece of scrapbook paper is. We're gonna cut off half an inch. There we go. That might have been an inch. I'm fine with that. You're done with your paper trimmer at this point. Now you want to get your envelope. We want to start at four and seven eighths. So all you're going to do is come here, go to four and seven eighths, cut this, and then we need a bone folder or anything that will help you to make the line here. Okay, so we're way over the line. We're gonna have to estimate this, but you know it comes right up in here. There we go. See how it's sliding along that line? And you just want to real gently come in here and just make that line. Okay, now, because this is so big, let's go ahead and fold this over so we can find the next spot because you're all done measuring. So now all you have to do is line up this little schnuggy thing with that. You're gonna punch this. Oh, we should have punched. Oh, we did punch the first one. Yay, us. Okay, so we're gonna line this up. Now we can see where this one is and we're gonna real carefully go along there. You don't wanna go fast. And they do have a specific um, bold, bone folder tool to that I think comes with it, but I don't have all the fancy things anymore because I don't mind my craft room very well. So now we're just trying to find that we can try to start up here and see if we're in the vicinity, but can we feel it? Oh, there we go, slid right in. So once you get it, you'll know that you're in there. Okay, this one again, we have to fold over like that. Now we're gonna come up here. We're gonna do one last punch. And one last run along here. And it's a little bit off, but it's fine. This is a very, very forgiving project. So now, oh, one last thing you can do if you want is you can go around and round the corners, right? I only care about the top flap corner. I don't care about any of the other flaps. And we're just gonna go along and you can use whatever tool you have to do this. All right, then you need to figure out what kind of glue you wanna use. You could use, depending on what you're putting in here, see how my center isn't exactly right, but it doesn't matter to me because I am going to be using this for a, a giant pocket in my art journal. So I am actually going to, it's gonna look like an envelope, but I'm gonna cut the top off. So I am going to use, you could use like a Yoohoo glue stick, come along here and then along here. You don't wanna go too far up because you're gonna have that opening, right? And I'm not, I'm not gonna be mailing this. I'm not gonna be putting a million pounds of stuff in this. So I don't really care if it is, you know, die hard, but I do want to kind of make sure this little flappy flap is done, okay? 
So then you just fold over this flap. It kind of seals up the whole shebang. You could use double-sided tape. You can use glue. You can use a glue stick. It doesn't matter. So we're going to do one more because that turned out perfectly. Now I'm going to glue for mixed media. I'm actually going to glue... this envelope closed because I want the look of an envelope, right? This is cute. And then I'm going to be able to decide later how I want to cut it. So see how that's a little bit off? You know how I'm deciding how I want to cut it? That's what I'm going to cut off. So I'm just going to straighten this up. And now we have a super fun pocket we can tip into um, page. So I can either leave it like this. I can, so what I'll probably do, I'll show you because it doesn't matter. I'm probably going to leave a little bit of this here and then I can tape this pocket in. Ooh, let's do that. No, do we want it there? Let's go a little bit further back. Are all these pages stuck in real good? I think they're stuck in pretty good. All right, so what we're gonna do is, just in case I wind up ripping some out later, I don't want to um, affix my envelope to a page I might rip out later. This is kind of, I'm calling it an art journal, but it's, kind of half an altered book and half a um, journal. Okay, wonderful. Now we're gonna come right along here and that's glued together, right? So that's a pretty solid tab. Ooh, let's keep those. We might wanna use those for backgrounds or something else. And then if I was ready to do this in, because I want to decorate this before I put it in, I would probably put it on this side because this is the pretty envelope side, right? This is the side that looks like an envelope and I'm going to be outlining the envelope parts and making it seem fancy pants. So that's how I would use this in, how I would add this envelope to my art journal. So you just tape it in with fabric tape or washi tape or something like that, and then cut the part you're not gonna keep in, and all of a sudden you have a really cool envelope in your journal. So I'll have links to all these products below, and hopefully that helps. Tara Jacobson, Artsy Fartsy Life.